Once again, good morning to Relentless Church. Me and Pastor Av love you very much. To our first, second, and third time visitors, from wherever you have traveled, we are grateful for you. Thank you. And we pray that uh, the experience and also this word will be something that you can take with you, glean from, grow, and do the work of kingdom ministry. I am just absolutely humbled and amazed at what the Lord is doing when I look at the mosaic and tapestry of the humanity that has been entrusted to us looking in this church. Seeing the beauty of diversity just moves my heart every single time. Genesis 126, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now I'll go to Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. I think the power of God, the beauty of God, the genius of God, the creativity of God is not found in Revelation. It's found in Genesis. If you really want to see the supernatural genius of our creator God, you look no further than the very first scriptures. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. Right there in the very beginning, we see the Father, the Creator. We see the Son, the light of the world. And we see the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, hovering over the face of the water. You see the fullness of God at the very beginning of Scripture, if you're looking. In the beginning, alek tav, it literally translates the beginning and the end, right there. In the beginning. And when you look at your life, you're looking at it from a linear perspective, and I need you to look from an eternal perspective. You're sitting in this pew, or you're watching online, not because it's something you chose, it was written that you'd be here. And no matter what the enemy has tried to do, he was not successful because you were here. And because you are here and this is the will of God, we know that the enemy wanted you to be somewhere else. So whatever opposition you had to walk through to get here, you've already defeated devils just by being in the place God intended. The vision series was not to impress people with preaching acumen. The vision series was to let this local church know what me and Pastor Aventer believe God has given us as vision to help you understand what we are going to be about and who we're going to be as a local church. But now today marks the end of me talking about it and it marks the genesis of you doing something about it. That's fine. I'm gonna preach it like I feel it, Daphne. See, most of y'all like games because too many people in church play games. I'm just saying, your kids play video games all the time. And a lot of y'all, we still playing church games. And we think we got, you know, tons of lives left over. And we could just do what we want and turn it on and off. But I need you to understand that it's go time. And it's time for the church to wake up and it's time for the world to realize that there are some people that are serious about the kingdom and I need to know if I'm in the right church with the right people at the right time so that we can become the hands and feet of Jesus to a lost and dying world. Tell somebody it's go time. Too many people sitting on the sidelines tailgating in the spirit when we need you with your uniform on on the field. 
I'm getting ready to press this button. And when I do, I need you to get up. Did you, do y'all see this button? Don't make me come up there in that premium balcony. People like games, so let's play a game. I'll need you to watch it. Everywhere he goes, as soon as he walks, something grows. I need you to see everywhere he treads, he has dominion. Look at your neighbor. Tell him it's time to begin. Tell somebody else it's time to begin. Everybody say these words. This is the title of the message. In the beginning. Say it again. In the beginning. Even though the title is in the beginning, I need you to clap and give God praise like it's the end. Oh, no, you could do better than that. Are y'all ready? Get your notepads out because I'm getting ready to go rapid fire. Everybody say it one more time in the beginning. I need you to see that player one is up on the screen. Who was player one? Say it again. Good, Pastor Byron, you are our young, our youth pastor. And you got it right. He said Adam. Everybody say Adam. Adam. Adam was player one. Put this down. Write this down. In the beginning, there was player one. Adam. Adam had been gifted with a garden. Who created the garden? Who? The Bible says the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. The word eastward in the Hebrew means aforementioned beforehand or before time, which means that God planted the garden with Adam in mind. I'm already going faster than I normally do. I told you we got to catch up, got to keep up, get ready for this. You need to understand that where you are right now, God already had it in mind. You didn't just arrive at that job. You didn't just arrive in that position. You didn't just arrive in that relationship. This was the garden God had in mind. And the purpose of the garden is not for your comfort. It is for your calling. And for too long, people like me and other pastors and leaders thought that the church was to make you feel good, which is why we don't see a lot of mature, Christ-filled believers who are walking out the mandate of the New Testament church. That's why we don't see 3,000 added in a day. That's why we don't see supernatural miracle signs and wonders happening overnight. That's why we don't see the level of power that they saw at the beginning of the New Testament church, because we have created something that Jesus never intended. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now, Pastor John, why are you talking about the beginning at the end of the vision series? Because at the end of vision is the beginning of your discipleship. Without a vision, the people perish. I've given you vision, so now it's time to live. Tell somebody it's time to live. We've been living beneath our privilege. We've been living beneath our calling. We've been living beneath our anointing. We've been living beneath our purpose and we have been content to do so. My prayer is that God agitates us in our spirits to the point that we do not sit idly by and just exist, but that we live a full, engaged, Holy Spirit filled life. Nothing worse than drowning our sorrows and depression in bottles of brown liquor, hoping for the days to change when God has a purpose for our life bigger than our pain. Your pain was a part of the plan. Your tears were a part of the plan. Your mistakes were a part of the plan. Your failures were a part of the plan. And it wasn't a part of the plan in the middle. It was a part of the plan. You got one life down here. You better maximize it. Tell somebody, max out. Tell somebody else, max out. 
You got one life down here. Don't waste it on people that don't see you. Don't waste it on people that are trying to use you. Don't waste it on people that are trying to manipulate you. Don't waste it on people trying to control you. Don't waste it on people that don't love you. Don't waste it on people that beat you or put their hands on you. Don't waste it on people and things that don't have an eternal value. God said, let us make men, Pastor Jermaine, in our image. Well, then if God wants something that looks like him, what did God look like? Well, I'm getting ready to preach. That's a shake like that. That's when I'm getting ready to preach. Pastor Tosh, you did good at Aretha Franklin's funeral, honey. You did a good job. You were classy. You were elegant. You were understated. I wanted more of you. When you're anointed, people want more of it, not less of it. Why did I bring that up in the middle? Because she had dominion. You don't just walk in the rooms like that. You have to be invited. And when you do, <laughs> anyway, God put her there because he knew he could trust her with it. I don't know who this is for, but God's about to walk you in rooms that your resume do not qualify you for, that your pedigree does not qualify you for, that your past issues and mistakes do not qualify you for, but your anointing absolutely qualifies you for it. So I need you to square your shoulders and walk in because you're supposed to be there and the room is not complete until you get there. I said the room is not complete until you arrive. But you cannot walk into a room that God has prepared for you unless you've gone through the process. This one's for the people that have cried at night. This is for the ones that thought about giving up. This is for the ones that have been battling that spirit of heaviness. Was it last week a pastor committed suicide in California? The week before he talked about depression, he stood with his wife and he told the people that he had been battling through depression. A man of God, loves God. And he said, I'm a, I'm a God is gonna, he's freeing me. You know, he, he preached and declared that he was, he was fighting that devil. Church praying for him, a wife that loved him, three little boys that adored him, took his own life the night before church. And I dare any godless so-called Christian to say anything because you don't know what people are going through. You don't know how hard this is. You don't know how many times my mother had to talk me off the ledge from throwing this microphone away and taking a short walk off a big building because there are times when the attack of the devil is so intense that you don't know if you're coming or going and you better have an anchor that is deep. You better have a word that is real and you better have a community that will fight for you when you cannot fight for yourself. And sometimes when you can't see which way to go you got to get back to the beginning and realize that all the hell that's breaking loose is because of the heaven that's on the inside of you and I need somebody to get free right now get free right now because I wasn't the only one battling with depression I wasn't the only one battling with the spirit of heaviness found out some of my leaders were battling with it too but none of us said anything because the devil likes for you to keep secrets Somebody's getting free right there. Some of us have been carrying all kinds of sickness, but it's not natural, it's spiritual. I heard Pastor Chris Hodges say, you're only as sick as your secrets. I want to get back to the beginning when it was just me and God. 
I want to get back to the beginning where it was in the garden and I knew who I was and there was no issue because sin hadn't entered the picture. I want to be regenerated. I want to be reborn. I want to be the new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't want to be held hostage to my past. I want to go back to the beginning. I want to go back to where God created me. I want to go back to the place where I was on fire for God. Is there anybody that wants to get back to the beginning? The reasons why people don't want to go up the street to the Imagine Center is not because you're worried about traffic. It's because you don't think you have what it takes to add value. Because the devil has lied to you and told you that you are not qualified because of something you've done or something you're currently doing. But I'm here to awaken the anointing that is in you. When God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, let him have dominion. When God decided, because here's the thing, he, he thought about it, then he spoke it in Genesis 1.26. Then he didn't create until Genesis 2 and 7. There's a distance between what he said and what he makes. The frustration in your life is because you know he said it. But you don't look like what he said yet. But you have to understand that if he said it, it has to manifest. And the, the challenge is the devil wants you to give up before it manifests. That's why I came to announce at 9.44 a.m. on the 2nd of September of 2018. Nine times two is 18 and 18. Come on, Holy Ghost. I want you to unlock something in here that what he said is about to manifest. It will not delay. It's coming suddenly as in right now. It is a violent breakthrough. It's almost like your blessing couldn't get to you softly, so it has to violently break through some stuff to get to you. You're gonna sense a rumbling. There's gonna be a shift, almost an earthquake. It'll be, it'll be lightning and thunder, and then when it gets to you, there'll be a peace that floods your soul, and you'll know it's God because you're not fighting anymore. You're gonna be in the promised place, the purpose place, and the planted place. Let us make man in our image. But in Genesis 2 and 7, it says, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The word dust is afar, dry earth, dust powder, ashes, mortar, rubbish. Why in the world would a loving God a creator God, take rubbish. You could have made me out of gold. No, because if I made you out of gold, you would think that you already had value. He took rubbish so that all of us would know that in ourselves we have nothing of value to give him. Only his breath. It's your breath in my lungs. So we pour out our, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. God said, I'm going to breathe, but I've got to make it. Dust, sand, but you can't make anything out of sand. Here's the thing. If he said, let, it, let us make man in our image, he wanted something that would reflect him. He wanted a mirror. He wanted to be able to look at you and see himself. You know how you make a mirror? You melt sand. The reason why you're agitated and uncomfortable is because you're feeling the heat. You thought that was hell. That was heaven. Heaven's been heating you up to liquefy you so he could mold you because he doesn't want just a man, he wants a mirror. He wants to look at you and see his own reflection. But he leaves just enough imperfections in the glass so that you rely on his image, not your own.
The last thing we need is another leader with pride. People who serve God like they're doing God a favor. When you walk in, the whole world has to stop. I bind that devil in the name of Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Everyone here has a gift. You, sir, have a gift, a gift that will never be seen again after you leave here. You, sir, have a gift. You, ma'am, a gift. You, a gift, a necessary gift for the earth. You, my friend, have a gift. Your son has a gift. That's my buddy. He has a gift. He has a gift of joy. Every time I see him, I get joy. My, 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 my spirit lights up because when I see him, I see the beauty of innocence and the love of Jesus in his heart. He's a beautiful soul, and where other people don't see value, God hides gifts. He hides calling. See, that's why many of you have been battling depression because you don't know why people don't see you. But it's not that they don't see you. God hid you. Because God always plays hide and seek with his most valuable gifts. Oh Lord, I'm trying to help somebody in here. Your gift has been hidden because God knew if your insecurity was stronger than your gift, you'd let people manipulate you and use your gift. And you would need validation from people, but God hid your gift long enough that you said, I don't care what they think. God said, finally, now I can use you. I declare right now that you get free from people and go back to the beginning. Did you hear what I said? No guilt, no shame, no condemnation, no insecurity. Because in this season, we're getting to the beginning. It's time to begin. What was the unique property in the garden? The garden existed, Pastor Darius. It existed in such a way that as soon as Adam planted, things began to grow. Notice that a part of the curse in Genesis, God did not curse Adam. He cursed the ground, which means what normally came up overnight is now going to take months. I need you to understand that God has just released, help me Holy Ghost, I need a couple of prophetic intercessors to pray right now because I got to release this word. We are stepping into a Eden moment where as you sow it, you'll watch it grow. Pastor DeMarcus, they, Pastor Tasha, do you remember what I talked about this week to you and the, uh, some of the worship leaders that I was believing God for a supernatural significant uh, seed this weekend and, and I have it here in my hands and this one, this, I felt this one and, and I've always been a tither and I always give offering but there's something about this atmosphere that the ground is right and God said you've stepped into Eden and what happens in Eden is when you sow it, it doesn't take months to grow, it grows overnight. When Adam sowed, why do you think God says it's not good for him to be alone? If it was a normal crop, he could have did it because it doesn't, stuff doesn't grow overnight. But he was working so hard because as soon as he planted it, he started seeing stuff grow because that's the power of Eden. There was no delay because there was no sin. What if I tell you that the blood of Jesus is now covered over your sin and you're stepping into a season where the guilt and condemnation of your past cannot stop you from moving into your future? What if I told you that the blood of Jesus is enough and that you are the righteousness of God? What if I told you that you're stepping into an Eden moment that as soon as you sow it, you're going to watch it grow? What if I told you that God doesn't want you sitting in that seat, but he wants you to tell the world what he did for you? And what he did for you is he saved your soul. He brought you out 
out of a miry clay. He's broken the back of the devil. And whatever you used to be, you are not that anymore. And then the devil will whisper in some of your ears and say, but you still drinking, you still smoking, you still sleeping around. But yeah, I'm not doing all of that the way I used to. And even now I feel convicted when I do it. I need you to know that's a victory. Because when you used to sin, you didn't even care. But now you care. And when you care, that means the Holy Ghost has a hold to your heart. Don't let your struggle cause you not to be used by God. Yeah, I'm human. Yeah, I fail. Yeah, I'm not perfect, but I love Jesus and he saved me and he is Lord and I'm not going to shut up and I've got something of value to give to God. Is there anybody in here that knows God will use broken things, dusty things, rubbish, and he will breathe into you and you will become a living being. God is not looking for perfect people. He's actually looking for rubbish. hear me I've been here four months and before that I've been here since January coming and going there is something in the atmosphere today and it's breaking in your favor whether you give a seed or a praise get something in the ground I said get something in the ground Titus you were here because God wants to unlock what's next in you and your wife come here please Father, I declare over the Terry family an uncommon oil, a supernatural anointing, that whatever they plant, it will begin to grow immediately. No more delay, fresh revelation in the word, fresh strategy to win the city, surrounding regions, supernatural resource for everything you put in his heart to do. Dominion in Jesus' name. And I lay hands on myself and I lay hands on Pastor Av that Relentless Church will become everything you intended for it to be. That every resource that has been held up comes to us. For the people that have been sitting on the fence, tell them get off the fence and get on the field. In the name of Jesus, I declare that our church will walk in a level of power and favor unlike anything we have ever seen. And I further declare that the power of the Holy Ghost will be evident that the fragrance of God will rock this house and that the people who are watching online will feel the supernatural power of God that we are no longer walking in revelation alone but we get back to the genesis where we were in the garden and as soon as we planted it it produced a harvest and for those who are spectating on the sidelines convict their heart to get on the field or redirect them to a church that'll use them and let them live a regular life but in here we're gonna serve the lord in here you're going to contribute to the kingdom. In the beginning, it's time for you to begin a brand new journey of discipleship where you and your family utilize your gifts, your skills, and your unique talents, and you sow it back into the local church so that more disciples will be birth. This is all about building his church. Come on and stand. As I pray. Oh yes it is. Ah, it is breaking. Mm. Some of y'all leaving. It ain't time to leave. That's not the church. It is shifting. Leave it right there. In my direction. Oh, yes, it is. It is breaking in my favor. As I pray.
seven weeks. Seven weeks. Come here, Pastor Aventon. Seven weeks. We've been preaching vision. And now today, it's time for you to join me and this smoking hot leader. You need to join this church. You need to rededicate your life and get saved. You got 32 seconds to get down here to this premium altar. Bring everything you brought in with you, including your kids, your spouse, your purse, your Bible. I need you to come on down. Wow, that was fast. Welcome home, brother. Welcome home. There he is, look at that. Let's go. Do y'all see what God is doing? Welcome home, brother. Welcome home, my brother. Welcome home. How are you? Welcome home. 